So in this problem, we're going to solve Laplace's equation for this situation here. So it's going to be using the the setup in example 3.3, but with this, well, with these conditions. So what exactly is this saying? So I have here the setup of example 3.3, and what exactly the problem is saying is that, so let me just extend these lines here. So. This is what's going on beneath this plane here. So what it's saying is that this special plate here, they're going to set this lower half to be to have a potential of v naught, and this top half will have a potential of negative v naught. So that's all that it's saying. So how do we find the potential inside the rest of the space uh, within this enclosed area? So the first step, I'm going to start off with this equation. So let me just change the color of my pen. So we need to find the potential. And I'm going to start off at this step. So using separation of variables, you can arrive at this conclusion that the potential has to look something like this. So I'm not going to derive this step. Again, you can see it in the, in the example. So this is just by separation of variables. So at this point, the next step we need to do is to simplify this expression using our boundary, boundary conditions. So what boundary conditions can we use? So the first thing you can notice is that when x tends to infinity, so when we move from here all the way to infinity, the potential is always going to drop back down to zero because we're getting further and further away from this uh, special plate here. We're going to Get, uh, we're going to move away from its influence. So once we're sufficiently far away when x is equals infinity, the potential is just going to drop back down to zero. So when x tends to infinity, we know that the potential will tend to zero. And one of what and under what can, circumstances will that happen? So when x tends to infinity, this expression here will tend to infinity because this is positive. So the only way such that x tends to infinity and will entail that the potential will tend to zero is that if a is equal to zero. So we've already obtained our first simplification. For the b constant, I can just absorb it into these two constants. So because we know that a has to be equal to zero for this condition to be true, we know that our potential is going to look something like this. So this is the first simplification. The second boundary condition we could use is that, so you see that when y is equal to zero, when y is equal to zero, our potential is going to be equal to zero. So this is by definition, this is the condition that we've set. This bottom plate here is uh, grounded, so it's the potential is going to be equal to zero. So when y equal to zero, the potential is going to be equal to zero. So uh, sine zero is going to be equal to zero, so this isn't going to cause much trouble. Well, cosine of 0 is going to be equal to 1. So if we want the potential to be equal to 0, d has to be equal to 0. So we're going to have another simplification. So we can get rid of this term here, because d has to be equal to 0 for this condition to be true. So right now you can see we have two more uh, unknowns. We have k and c. So the third condition is when y is equal to a, then the potential is going to be equal to zero. Once again, by definition, the top plate is grounded. And uh, by substituting y equal to a, you see that we're going to have a c sine k a equal to zero. And under what circumstances will, be this, will this be true? That will only happen when k a is equal to n pi, where n is equal to some integer, so 1, 2, 3, so that means k is going to be equal to n pi over a. So that means our potential is going to be equal to c e negative n pi x over a sine n pi n pi y over a. So we've uh, gotten rid of the k, so all we have now is c. So the next step we need to do is to notice that the linear combinations of all possible solutions is itself also a solution. So what I'm saying is that 
I can actually write the answer down into something like this. Or you can just add up the differential to Laplace, Laplace's equation. You'll see that this expression here also satisfies Laplace's equation, right? And so using this, we can actually tweak this constant C and so that our fourth and final boundary condition can be satisfied. And that is that this bottom part has to have this, has to, uh, the potential of this bottom half has to be equal to this, and the top half has to be equal to this. So what I'm saying is that, so V is zero Y. So X is equal to zero. That means we're on this plane here, this Y, Z plane. So when X is equal to zero, So this is going to be equal to 1. We're going to have something like this. It's going to either be equal to negative v0 or v0. And this happens when y is between 0 and a over 2. And it's going to be equal to negative v0, or y is between a over 2 and a. So using this, we can actually then use Fourier's trick to f try to find what exactly is Cn. So the first step is to multiply both sides by sine m pi y over a. So m is some arbitrary constant, some integer. So arbitrary, I don't know what it is. And we can do the same thing to the other side. And then thanks to Fourier's trick, we know that the integral on the right when n is not equal to m, this integral is going to be equal to 0. So when n is not equal to m, it's going to be equal to 0. And when n is equal to m, it's going to be equal to a over 2. And that's why... So I'm going to put the right side on the left-hand side now. That's why all this is just going to be equal to a over 2 cm. So for all the other n's, it's going to go away, and then only the m term is going to survive because all the other ones are going to be equal to zero. And on the right-hand side, we will still have this. Sine n pi y over a dy. And then now we can try to evaluate this integral. We know that from zero to a over two, the potential is going to be equal to v naught. And then from a over 2 to a is going to be equal to negative v naught. So that is given by the question. So now we're applying the fourth boundary condition. So this is a rather simple integral, so just have to be really careful with the constants and the negative signs. So this is the first expression. Similarly for the second one, so a so I'm just, there's going to be a negative sign when this changes to negative cosine, so I'm just going to cancel it out with that negative sign over there. So from a over 2 to a. And then now we can substitute the numbers in. So negative m pi. So we're going to have a cosine m pi over 2, and then minus 1, because it cosine of 0 is equal to 1. And then here we have uh, a v m pi with a cosine m pi minus cosine m pi over 2. So you see that a lot of terms here, so just bear with me with this. So let's do a bit of simplification. So on the right hand side, you see that uh, you can pull out the a, v, m, pi's. So let's do just that. And then we have these terms inside. We have a positive one and a negative cosine m pi over 2. And you see that there's also another one here. So we have two of these. So we have two of these cosine m pi over 2's. 
And then we also have a cosine and pi. And you should also note that cosine and pi can be written as negative 1 to the power of n because cosine pi is equal to negative 1, cosine 2 pi is equal to 1, cosine 3 pi is equal to negative 1, so it's the same as this. So now we have this expression here, so I'm just going to write it out like this. So we have this expression. So you can say that we're done, but we can actually simplify this a bit further. So notice that when m is equal to 1, this expression is going to be equal to, so this is 1 minus 1, and then cosine pi over 2 is equal to 0, so it's going to be 0. When m is equal to 2, this is 1 plus 1, so you get, so you get 2. Cosine pi is negative 1, so you get 2 plus 2, so you get 4. When m is equal to 3, once again, 1 minus 1, that's 0. Cosine 3 pi over 2, that's 0, so you get 0. m equal to 4, you get 1 plus 1, so that's 2. Cosine, you get a cosine 4 pi over 2, so that's cosine 2 pi, which is equal to 1, so you get a minus 2, so you get 2 minus 2, so it's also 0. This pattern keeps continuing, so for m equals to 5, it's 0, m equals to 6, it's 4, and then 0, 0, so 0, 4, 0, 0, it keeps on going. So you see that this expression here, it's going to be equal to 4 for this, for, for when m is equal to 2, 6, 10. So you can see that it follows a general term, uh, kind of like uh, 4n minus 2. So when 4n equals to 1, 2, 3. So when n equals to 1, you get 2, n equals to 2, you get a 6, n equals to 3, you get a 10. So for this general term, this expression here is going to be equal to 4. So let's try to simplify this further using this piece of information. So I'm just going to dump these terms over to the other side, so you get 2. So you know that this thing is going to be equal to 4. So we get 8 v naught m pi only when m is equal to 2, 6, 10, and so forth, based on what we found here. And just to write this a bit neater, we can do something like this, 4n minus 2 pi, when n is equal to 1, 2, 3. So I'm, I prefer using this because it's just a bit more comfortable using this, uh, this kind of like numbering. So now we found cm, so we can actually combine it to get our ultimate answer. So recall that all we're trying to do now is to f was to find the constant c, and now we've done that. So now we need to substitute it back into this. So n equal to 1 to infinity. So we get 8v 4n minus 2 pi. And then we have an e term. So e to the negative 4n minus 2 should be pi x over a. And then there's a sine term. 4n minus 2 pi y over a. So I know this is a huge answer, but this is it. So this is the potential.